Now, if you know me, you'll know that I'm not some military war historian buff that goes up to women at parties and talks to them about how the T-72 is the best tank ever made. And truth be told, I think the M1 Abrams, you know, shits on the T-72. But that actually did happen. I was at a party many years ago and I was talking to a female and I could not stop talking about tanks. Now, mind you, I was a little bit, like, I wasn't to the point of intoxicated where I didn't know what I was saying. I was very well... (laughs) <laughs> aware and conscious of the words coming out of my mouth and for some reason I thought that uh t- just talking about this was a good idea. Now what this has to do with the video it doesn't it really doesn't have anything to do with the video. When I was writing the script it did have a purpose but not anymore but I want to talk about After Conflict because it definitely is a game I am looking forward to because there are a few things right at the moment that we know of and the first thing right I want to talk about is vehicles. I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite things in like a war type game, any war type game, you know, even if it's fucking Battlefield 2 from 2005 or 2006, whenever that was released, vehicles are like my favorite thing. And that is also the reason why I like to play on Resort in RS2 Vietnam, because I I, I like to fly the helicopters. I just love being in a Cobra with Alpha from Rice Farming Zone. But look, to keep things on topic, we have a fair few number of vehicles so far that are confirmed and modeled. Well, actually, it's the low poly version of the model. So what you see here in the gameplay and in the screenshots and photos will be improved on. So don't take this as the finished product. This game is like nowhere near being finished. But first off, we have the BTR-70. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a fan because I think it looks ugly. Not how it is implemented in game, mind you. Just in real life, I'm not too much of a fan of this tank or like personnel carrier, whatever the fuck you call it. I even have a photo of me and a couple of my mates in the back of one of these. I might throw it up on screen if I can censor out our faces. But I am more of a, you know, a BMP-1 or BMP-2 enjoyer because they're the ones from Call of Duty 4 and I'm like, hey, those look pretty cool. But these are also in game. I much prefer these. I you know, maybe slap a fancy paint job on them and yeah, you and the boys in the back of one of these playing Russian hard base and uh, yeah, you're all golden, you're all good to go. But you know, we're also getting some trucks, the, fuck, how do you pronounce that, Ural 4320 and M939 and the TPZ1 Fuchs, fucks. I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't think of the word fuck when I saw this word, but it looks like a truck, so I'm just gonna slap it in this category anyways. Now, as for the tanks, so far we get the T-64 BV. I don't care what people say, this somewhat resembles a T-72, so I'll take it to the bank. It's also decked out in ERA, but god damn, it just looks sexy. We also get the Leopard 1, in my opinion, doesn't look as sexy. If there are any war enthusiasts, people that are enthused about war, (laughs) Who could compare these tanks in the comment section? That would be awesome. But now there is also, you know, one tank at the end of the lot. Now, I can't identify it, but I swear on my life, right, that this has to be like some self-propelled gun or self-propelled tank. Because it looks exactly like the one that I found in one of my favorite games, which is World in Conflict. It's not my favorite, but it's in the top favorites, okay? And this does pose the question, will we be getting, you know, self-propelled cannons or anything where I can sit at the back of the map in a tank and just use a fucking cannon and bomb people from like a couple of kilometers away. Now that's the question because I mean if you play World of Tanks you just hate being bombed from someone at the other side of the map and you can't do anything about it so it'll be probably very interesting and I mean they really want to stress the idea about how you want to communicate and talk to your teammates. Now this also poses the question right hypothetically okay this isn't confirmed this is just me rambling on it's all hypothetical so let's say right I'm in a self-propelled tank right now I'm using the fucking cannon I'm bombing the shit out of people there's like a language barrier right some guy He's like Polish can't speak English very well, and he's saying, okay, we're attacking this point, but then it just gets lost in translation or something, and I just start bombing my teammates. Now, that that's gonna be, that's probably what I'm concerned about. <laughs> Admittingly, I, th- I think it'll be, it'll be pretty funny. It'll be bad, but it'll be pretty funny. But look, back to the training room, you know, we do have some hangers with closed doors. I did clip into them to see if they, like, left, like, a little Easter egg or something in there of, like, a little <laughs> hidden tank, like the bomb sample something is just hidden in there. But I mean, hopefully one day these hangers do open up and I can actually get in these vehicles and drive them around and run people over with them. All right, but moving on, when I play Sea of Thieves with my friends, we always argue about, you know, 
know, which way we're going. Oh, are we going the correct way? Use the map, use the compass. And we, you know, we just sit around the compass trying to figure things out. And this game will be no different because they're going to be adding in faction specific compasses where, you know, if you want to know the general direction that you're going in, you need to pull out a compass and look at it. Now this poses the question, well, not really a question, but I'm just going to assume that they light up in the dark because I mean the dark or the nighttime effect in this game is, it, it's pretty damn spectacular. I'm going to go more in depth in, a little later on, but it'll be pretty funny you just being huddled up in a bush looking at a compass trying to figure out the correct way to go. But speaking of night maps, they've introduced this special scope called the NSPU scope, which if you don't know, it's this giant fucking scope, but it does grant one the ability to see at night. Now, like I mentioned previously, nighttime is going to be, you know, it's going to be interesting because a game such as this that you know wants to focus so much on realism i'd assume that you need to identify friends from foe based on uniform differences like in hearts of iron 4 and even in um oh shit what's that game called uh beyond the why i'm gonna be doing a review on that later on but i played on the free weekend i got so many friendly fires because even though the uniforms are very distinct i still ended up killing a couple of teammates i still remember actually you know, i'll save that for the beyond the wire video i'm not gonna spoil it but back to after conflict friendly fire is something Something you definitely need to keep in mind because for starters I'm not the smartest person and I know that other people are probably around my intelligence level or even lower and I know that I will shoot a friendly in the back like I I'm sorry but this is your like warning okay to anyone watching this who's gonna play this game I am warning you right now that I will shoot you in the back not on purpose but by accident it's gonna happen you may as well press F1 to forgive me I don't know if that's gonna be a thing in the game but you know hypothetically you're just gonna have to wait is it F1 or F2 I forgot which one. I think it was F1. It just, just forgive me because I'm just giving you the warning now in advance. But look, back to nighttime. If you shoot, you are easily identifiable. Like, just taking a single shot, you literally light yourself up and you're going to literally get peppered by people if you shoot and you don't like have a, a flash suppressor or like anything to conceal your muzzle flash or even if you're firing fucking tracer rounds probably not a good idea to have them at night time because you're going to be spotted from miles away but back to the nspu scope you can turn it on night mode which makes things really easy to see at night and you can turn it on to day mode so you can you know use it during the day the gas is coming out from the gun also is a nice touch and it does sort of affect my aiming especially if you're firing constantly it's it's, it's a good addition. Now, I want to talk about in-game mechanics. Now, first, I want to talk about the penetration. That sounds dirty as fuck, but one thing I love about Rising Storm 2 Vietnam is how if someone runs behind a wall, right, even if it looks pretty solid, my M14 doesn't care how thick the plaster in between the walls is. It's going in full force and no rubber, and it's going to penetrate it. And there have been times where I've been accused of hacking because I've just been able to trace someone's movement when they go behind a building or, it, like, in a building, or behind a wall but what I'm trying to say is is in this game you know they're going to have advanced penetration system basically where they state you know you need to choose your cover properly otherwise Tansu and his big ass machine gun are going to spray and pray the living fuck out of that outhouse you decided to take cover in. Now another cool thing is that they've implemented a feature where if you look around whilst using the scope you get this weird shadowy effect. It's cool because you know if you are looking through a real scope there's a thing called scope parallax parallax I don't know how to say that word it's a pretty big word admittingly i had to google what it meant because even on the website they tried to explain it and some simpleton like me just couldn't really comprehend what the word meant i know that this was a thing in call of duty 4 wait no that was a coriolis effect I, I mean i don't know if the coriolis effect will be in the game but i think that would be cool anyway because you know I mean, I, I don't even know what it is. How can I say it would be cool anyway when I don't even know what it is? I try to Google it, something to do with maths, and I'm like, I'm not doing maths. I graduated high school. I don't need to prove to you that I can do maths, okay? That's all I'm going to say on that topic. But, I mean, <laughs> this, this game is going to look pretty goddamn cool. I'm excited for it. It's going to be good just sitting in a tank and, you know, playing Russian hard base with my fucking friends. It's, it's going to be good. But anyways, I'm going to end today's video there. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I will leave the link to After Conflict's website and Discord in the video description and in probably the top pinned comment. If I remember, I'm very forgetful. I, I hope I remember how to do this. But anyways, my name is Tantu and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.